nickname because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego, like Peter Parker or Bruce Banner. But he died when I was a kid, my mom too. And I ended up here, sitting here in my tiny corner of nowhere. There's nowhere left to go, nowhere, except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do. But they stay because of all the things they can be. Can you feel this? Yeah. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. The Oasis was the brainchild of James Halliday. Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the oasis itself. Who is this Parzival? And how the hell is he winning? Find him. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you all are having a great day. So, I want to talk about, excuse me, I want to talk today about the metaverse. What is the metaverse? It's a term we're hearing quite often now in the media. Facebook is now changing its name to Meta, and it's creating as many of the demos we've seen, what would appear to be this 3D virtual world um, using technology from VR headsets to haptic suits that experience touch and feel. Um and moving our experience uh, with the online, our online interactions, moving it into the next level where it's not that we're these outside entities uh, uh, basically uh, experience the internet, but we're actually now in the internet, so to speak, right? And so uh, we've seen this play out in the movies like The Matrix. We've seen uh, this is a trailer from Ready Player One. And I, I picked this trailer because I think it's probably one of the easiest ways to understand the metaverse. Because what I liked about the movie, and I don't want to give it away just in case you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. But it pulls a lot in the socioeconomics gets pulled into uh, what the metaverse is. Uh, it gets pulled to tour in a way where you can experience what it means to these people's value systems 10, 20, 30 years into the future, right? The speed of our technology is moving us ever so closer to uh, these worlds where uh, in a time where our, our fiction and facts are so close together, they're hard to, to distinguish the two. And it's becoming like that day in and day out with our uh, high-end uh, iPhones and Oculus uh, devices and so on and so forth. Uh, our driverless cars, our Tesla, you know, the, the suits and so on. Um, and so Metaverse comes from, an, uh, the term itself comes from a 1992 novel written by Neil Stevenson known as Snow Crash. And what Snow Crash was about was it was kind of this dystopian future where people would go into this VR virtual world uh, using the devices we use today uh, a lot more advanced. So they would use a drug like a hallucinogenic drug as well to even make the experience even more immersive and, and, and real, undistinguishable from reality. And this is the, the future we're moving in now. Where the blockchain comes to this, a lot of what we hear about like Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and just our society in general, and we got to see it during the pandemic, is that almost your entire lives are going to be conducted online to the point you're going to create these avatars and personalities, like pretty much like we have today. We, we have these psychological uh, different versions of ourselves known to the world on the internet that might be exactly the same as what you you experience and who you are in real life and it may be some version of that right now with this this is more literal and then it plays out with the these avatars that can change form represent you or some aspect of you and that's what the metaverse is all about 
What is so interesting about what our futures are going to look like is all of the business as well, our finances, our uh, entertainment, our social activities are going to be conducted uh, virtually 3D. And a lot of people uh, can't believe that or they're disillusioned about it. But it, it is the reality of what is happening to us. Now we can see it evolving into that. And that's what's going to come of this. What is so very interesting about this is technology wise, being able to recreate, uh, imagine creating and experiencing a high performance sports car that costs three, four hundred thousand dollars, not being able to completely tell the difference and, and, and or not even needing a sports car at all, being able to teleport to your favorite vacation spots and locations and feel the, 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 the breeze on your face, right, from the ocean and so on and so forth. Imagine what that does to the travel economy. Imagine what that does to the economy overall when you are fulfilled by things that, as a human being, you never really needed in the first place, right? As to say, uh, you know, human beings uh, who may have several homes and so on and so forth, you may experience a virtual state, a virtual vacation, et cetera, right? That would change your values as you may find you don't need those things as much anymore, right? And that's what happens in movies like Ready Player One. Of course, when they go back to their real world, the resource of the, the trillions of dollars that would be created by this virtual goods economy and these virtual realities would chase people outside of the virtual world into the real world. So it becomes the lines become blurred. And that's what gener that is what's happening with our technology today. That's what's happening with blockchain technology, that what you do on the blockchain, that what you do in these virtual worlds are parallel to what how your real life is going to be impacted and affected. Same thing with social media. What people do on social media has real life implications in their money, in their livelihood, in their emotions, in their social activities, right? Because those personas that exist online impact the reality of who you are. And that's what's happening with the metaverse. That's, of course, now. Uh, when we're talking about in the cryptocurrency, there are so many of them. Projects like Bitcoin MYK that I'm spearheading uh, will use resources, the trillions of dollars like the metaverse, to create universal basic income projects. One big problem in uh, the depiction movies like Ready Player One and the metaverse is that who will control this new frontier resources? And companies are scrambling to control it. Companies like uh, uh, Facebook, interesting about uh, with Facebook getting involved in the movie uh, that I think is probably the best example of this. There's a company chasing uh, the regular people like us trying to control those resources, right? So we have to fear uh, agencies like Facebook getting involved, but we should make no mistake about it. Facebook owns Oculus. Facebook has a great amount of resources to create some of the best technology to be used in these virtual worlds to control the money of these virtual worlds. Projects like Bitcoin and MYK are trying to set us free by creating a uh, universal based guaranteed income to distribute to everyone in these virtual worlds. And we plan to do that by setting up and bridging the gap in these virtual worlds, creating these gateways that allow our cryptocurrency to link to many of these virtual uh, worlds and uh, distribute the money amongst all the citizens of the world in this, what will be our new future reality. And that's very important that we don't end up under the control and slavery in these virtual worlds uh, after the resources of our, and the economies of our standard reality has already been usurped taken from the people and the people struggle like they do today to survive in both worlds, right? This could create such an abundance in our psychology and mental landscape of how we view uh, resources, right? Again, if you're able to take an exotic vacation, uh, uh, have the experience of owning a private jet, several homes, uh, have the experience of uh, dating uh, the hottest swimwear models, all these things to a point 
that your value system begins to accept it over other uh, general ideas of reality, then that can have uh, uh, affect value systems and abundance. A lot of Earth's resources are locked up with just a few people, like 1% of the population, not because they need it, but because their value systems, psychologically, they are trapped in this, this area of, by controlling these resources, they can control people. In a virtual reality where that's no longer important, where everybody can symbolically be rich to the point in their mind psychologically, they don't put as much value on certain resources other people hold or use to control them. And as long as we can create universal basic income so that people aren't starved into submission like the Bitcoin MYK project plans to do, this can be a good thing and not a bad thing. But that's all I want to say in the video. Make sure you join projects like Bitcoin MYK today so that we don't become slaves of these metaverse-like systems uh, that are going to happen anyway. If you're in the cryptocurrency trying to make money off these things, we don't really know which ones are going to make the money. Don't fool yourself into thinking one of a million of these projects.